Hi guys, this is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make one of these puff flower hearts. And if you've ever made my puff flower scarf, the flowers are made just the same. Um, and they're connected the same. They're just uh, connected in different places. So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make the flower and how to connect them. And what you'll need is a 4.5 millimeter hook or size G hook and worst weight yarn, uh, four ply for the U.S., uh, and 10 ply for Australia. And also a tapestry needle to sew in your ends, to work in your ends. And that's one side and this is the other. I'm making this uh, as a summer project for myself to uh, have some kind of uh, crochet decoration on the wall next to my pictures that I've been uh, setting up lately. I think it'll be a nice centerpiece so to make the flower, all you do is you make your slip knot just a little closer here and you want to chain four. And then you want to go into that first chain that you did and slip stitch to form a ring and chain one. Now in the center ring here you want to put 12 single crochets. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, I'm working over my tail as I go, 10, 11, and 12. Now you want to slip stitch in the beginning stitch. Now for round two, you want to chain three, and we're going to be working puff stitches over two stitches. So we're going to go into that first stitch, the same stitch that you slip stitched into, draw up a loop, yarn over, go back in there for a second time, draw up a loop, yarn over, and go back in that same stitch for a third time. And you repeat that for the next stitch as well, three times. Go in there, draw up a loop, one time, yarn over, Go into that stitch, pull up a loop, that's twice. Yarn over, go into that same stitch, pull up a loop, and then pull through all your loops. I believe there should be 13 loops in total. And after you pull through all 13 loops, you want to chain three. And then you want to slip stitch in the same stitch that you did your second part of your puff stitch in. So slip stitch there, and then going right into the next stitch, slip stitch there as well. And then you'll start your next petal, which is chain three. And then you start your puff stitch in the same stitch here, and then you finish the second part here. So that's one. Two, three, and one stitch. One, two, three, and the second. We'll do all 13 loops and chain three. Then again, you want to slip stitch in the same stitch where you did the second part of your puff stitch. And then you want to slip stitch into the next stitch which will bring you to your next petal and you chain three and you repeat and I'll do this one in slow motion for you
and that's it. Just continue, chain three, and repeat it all the way around. And when you get to the end, you you should have six puff stitch petals. Finishing up my last petal here. Slip stitch in two, then go ahead and slip stitch in the next stitch as well. Then chain one, then leaving yourself a bit of tail to be worked into your puff flower. Go ahead and uh, cut your yarn. And that's your, per your first puff stitch flower. See it's all puff stitch on one side and it's got a nice chain border on this side so it's up to you which way you may want to hang it on the wall or use it for whatever that you want to use it for. So the first one is made complete. Then we'll start connecting our next puff stitches to it. So make your next puff flower again by chaining four, connecting to the beginning, chain one, then single crochet 12. And then when you get to your puff stitch row, I'll show you how to connect one flower to another. Okay. Simple to do the first connection. And you'll always be connecting your flowers the same way. You get to the point where you've got your puff stitch done and you pulled your your yarn through it. And before you do your chaining, you want to get the other flower. And you can see that there is a section here between the two chains. This is the one chain you you went up and this is the other chain you went down. And this is where you chained to close your puff stitch. We're going to be going under one chain going up to the to the other. Grabbing that small um, connection chain there. And then you just want to pull through. that will connect the flowers together. Then you want to chain three. Then finish your puff stitch petal by connecting it to the same stitch and then just move over and slip stitch in the next and make your next petal. One, two, three, one, two, and three. Pull through all the loops, then it always helps to lay it down. Find where the next connection should be, which is here. It's going to help much later when your project is bigger. Again, find that hole that's on the top in the middle there. Go through that. Then this is the chain. Then you just want to slip stitch and then chain three and then finish your petal by slip stitching into that same place where you did your second part of your puff stitch then slip stitch in the next stitch then finish your rest of your petals because you won't have any more to connect this round. I always try to start my connections just like I did there with my second petal because later on you may have many connections. You know, it could be flowers here, here, depends on which way you're working it. So always try to go at least from the second and then that way you make sure you have another, enough connections with your petals and then whenever you've got them all then you can just finish your rest of your petals that you don't need. It's best to have more than less. You don't want to do most of your flower and realize you needed three connections and have to back up. So finish this petal off and cut again leaving some tail to be worked in and then start on your next flower and I'll show you how to make a connection here. Okay, I'm at my second 
petal and now I'm going to be making a connection. We want to make a connection using three petals. This one, the connection that's in between the two petals, and then this last petal oh, here. So it'll be a connection here, here, and here. So we're going to go in through the first connection that we need to make because we're going to be working from right to left. Whoops go into that same space to make the connection, slip stitch, chain three. And make your next petal. Two, three, pull all, do all three. Now when making the connections in between, I usually favor the flower that I'm not connected to yet. And I'll go in through that same stitch. Just like there was nothing connected, I would go in through this stitch and make my connection. I'm going to do the same thing. You can see that there's a connection between these two flowers this connection, this one was actually connected to this one not the other way around so this one I'm going to go in through the same space like I normally would to connect any flower so the flower you're connected to when you're making a connection in between two flowers favor the one on the left and go into that one like you would make a normal connection Then finish your petal. And you can see. See, this one's connected to this one, and this one's connected to this one. So let's finish our third petal and our third connection. Two and three. Go through all 13 loops. And now again, you're always going to be facing the back. And this flower will always be folded back here to be, you know, so you can work with it. Now the next connection will be on the top here. Because if you lay your project flat, you can see naturally that connecting it here would make a good connection. It's not going to warp anything or pull the flower too tight. So connect it there on the top petal. Most of your connections, once you get going, will be three or more. Petals connected. But like I said, if you always start from your second petal and start your connections, you're always going to be sure that you'll have enough petals to make all your connections. So I'm just going to finish off my flower here. One, two, three, four, five. So I have one more petal to do. One, two, three. One, two, three. Then chain three. My yarn's getting caught. Okay. Now to hide your ends, to hide your ends, this isn't such a small area, but later on when your project gets wider, you're going to have it along the edges, they won't be in your way as much, but to show you how to hide your ends, thread your tapestry needle, and then I usually go through the connections underneath the petal if I can. You don't want to go so easily through the petal. Try to go along the border if you can. Those smaller stitches in the first single crochet row. 
and you want to hide the tail good so that it doesn't come out. I try to go through at least five, if not all six petals. Catch your tail, and that's one. It's not so bad uh, hiding the tails, you get used to it. It's pretty fast. And you can just kind of turn your work like this. You can get three petals all through at the same time. Then I'll hide these two. And the last one I like to come up through one of the puff stitches. Just because I want the tail to remain in the back. You can cut down like this. The uh tail is hidden so well that you can still use this side or this side for decoration. Um, I'm going to have a... I'll, sh I'll put up a picture since it's so so big and I'm so close to the camera you can't really see. Um, and I'll show you that it's a total here to the very tip is eight rows and then you have a eight flowers then seven then six five four three two and then one and you only have two rows that make up the top so it's basically it's a triangle and then you'll add you'll skip the center one here which is between you know you'll have three on this side and three on this side you'll skip this connection and just start here and that and then do three and then do two in each of those connected spaces what I'm talking about are those like I just showed you we have a connection here here and here those are the spaces you're gonna kind of be doing diagonally you'll do three on this side three on this side and then two at the top and that's it you'll be doing all your connections the same way working in these three areas every so often you may have you know cuz I kinda worked in a circle and I'll show you a picture of that and I just kinda went and followed going into my um, diagonal spaces till it got to about here and then I stopped because you don't want to go further past where you need so I did that and then I started making sure that I did it in the triangle, only doing the ones on the outside till I had the point that I wanted. But it's up to you. You can do eight here and then connect the eight uh, diagonal areas for the next and do seven. And then just working in the diagonal connections, you can go this direction. And just keep in mind when you're doing, if you're going to do it that way, when you get to the second row here, you're going to be needing to do a connection here, 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 and here. So just keep in mind where your connections need to be. And like I said, I'll have this on my site where you can see the pictures and you can see all the places where you would need to make a connection. And that's it. I hope that your heart turns out beautifully and that this tutorial was easy to follow. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share this video and please don't forget to subscribe.